Hi, Mary. Hi, Angelina. Uh, so multimodality is one of the key trends of AI in 2024. Um, today we're going to talk about、uh, Lava Next, which is a new large language and vision assistant model that just came out last week. And do you know that we can now do high quality image and text mix search and question and answering with this powerful new vision and Large language model in much better ways than before. So, Maria, my first question for you is: What is Lava, and how is this newest version better than the last one? Yeah, absolutely. So, yes, as you mentioned, multimodality has become a trend this year. And here, I am just showing two papers. One of them is it came out actually a few months ago. You can see that and. Most recent one is this one, where you can see there are a lot of companies are working on these multimodal LLMs. So definitely this year we are going to hear a lot more about these multimodal LLMs. And going back to your question, what is Lava? So Lava is a large language model and a vision assistant. So essentially, they have combined an LLM with Computer vision, so it's a multi-model that can understand images, and they have introduced a version called Lava 1.5 a few months ago in October, where you could use basically that model to ask questions about images, and it would understand you know the images and answer your questions. Um, so that model actually was working fairly well, but a, a few weeks ago. They have introduced a much better version of that model, which is called Lava 1.6, and they have improved upon that model 1.5 by adding just a few more capabilities. For example, now this Lava 1.6 is capable to just、um, understand images with higher resolutions. They have added better OCR capabilities and better visual conversation and understanding. So basically, when you start asking questions, the conversation that you have with the model is much more natural and more accurate. They have all the links on their demo page, demo website here, with a couple of examples essentially that you can share it with the audience. They also have a model zoo where you can see all different versions of this Lava 1.6. There are different number of parameters from 7B all the way to 34 billion parameters. So they are using Vicona and Mistral and Hermes. So these are the LLMs that they use and combine it with the image understanding. How about let's take a try on the demo page? Absolutely. The good thing is. The moment that this model came out, Olama, which is one of my favorite libraries out there, they have actually added the support for Lava 1.6. Now you can easily just use a local version of this Lava on your computer. So today I am going to show you a Jupyter notebook where I will go over this model and see how that works. All right, so this is my Jupyter notebook here. So before we start, make sure that you have already installed Olama on your computer, and then when you install it, you also need to download Lava 1.6. It's pretty straightforward. When you install Olama, it's actually Olama run Lava in your terminal, and then it will download the model here. You can see it's 4.1 gigabytes. So Another library that you need to install is Olama Python library. Today we are going to use Llama Index. You don't need Llama Index essentially to use Olama, but the good thing is Llama Index has integrated this Olama into their library, so we can essentially use that one. Today I will just explain how we can use Olama within Llama Index library. It's pretty straightforward. Not too many lines of code. First, we need to import this Olama multi model from the Llama index. So we give the model name here. I am going to download an image 
So this is the image that I'm downloading and here I show that. So as you can see, the image is the image of a Colosseum in Italy. And then when you download the image, I downloaded the image and put the image in this folder. I called it test.png. So I'll show you how to read the image that are stored locally in a folder. Or if you have, let's say images online, then you can read them directly. The first version here of the code is if you have a bunch of URLs of the images, you can easily use this function from Llama Index again to read the images. So you can see here, let's say I have this URL, which is essentially the same image that I showed you here, the Colosseum. Uh, so it's gonna download or read the image. And this is the uh, image document, which is compatible with Llama index format. But if you have images in a particular directory, then you can use uh, Llama index uh, simple directory reader, and you give the path to your folder, and then it's going to read all of the images from that folder. When you read the image, then you can start asking questions about the image. So here I show you two different ways. One is the non-streaming version where when you ask a question, you essentially need to wait until the LLM generates the response completely and then it will give you the response so you can see that. For example, here, see now it is running behind the scene, but I don't see any text streaming out of the model. So that's why that is called non-streaming. So we have to wait and when it is done, then we have to print, let's say the response. So I ask, this was my prompt. Uh, and I ask, tell me more about this image. And I pass the image document that I just created. And then this is the response. This is an image of a Colosseum, etc. But this way usually is not very convenient, right? Because when we ask a question, we don't want to wait. So we would like to see something like ChatGPT where it starts generating the text and we can see the text. So if you want that, then you need to use the stream complete function from Loma Index. So I ask the same question with the same image. But here you can see instead of waiting, it starts generating the response what so you can see that right this is streaming yeah so this is a normal response from a human being as well because you can see that people start talking if you talk with them right or exactly start typing so it's more more normal feels more natural. yes it's more natural and it's just more convenient right it is yeah feels natural so when you ask questions you have two options you can use the completion function or you can use the chat function and what is the difference between completion and chat completion is more of a single turn you ask a question it gives you an answer but if you want to have a conversational experience like back and forth then you should use the chat function and again for the chat there are two options you can use the non-streaming version or a streaming version the format is very similar here. If you want to use the chat, you need to use this chat function from Llama Index. And then here you essentially give the, like the prompt here is more of a, like a message which has the role and the content, which is more native to OpenAI kind of format. And then again, the same thing, you have to wait until the response is generated and then you can display that. And then here you can use the streaming version of the chat where you can just see the response while it is generated until it is complete. So as you can see, it is pretty straightforward. The, the Jupyter Notebook that here I am using is essentially very similar to the Llama Index Jupyter Notebook. I just added a couple of more pieces of code. So I will give you the link to the original Llama Index Jupyter Notebook. But yes, that's how you use Olama and Lava uh, model.
particularly for asking different types of questions about an image. Yeah, this is this looks very simple. This is less than maybe 10 lines of code, 20 lines of code. This is very convenient. Basically, there are a lot of potential application that people can build based on this very easily that's relevant to a mixture of text and image. And the Lava models are quite powerful these days. What are, what are some of the potential use cases that you've seen? Potential use cases include so many things that I can think of, but the first one is question answering over images, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have like a collection one of images. you were showing here. Right, right exactly. Yeah. But this is a very simple use case where I just simply ask, is describe the image. But think about a use case where you, uh, you can ask particular questions. Let's say, what is the color of that object in the image? Things like that. So you can do visual question answering or question answering over images. That's one use case. The other use case is search. So you can do a search uh, which combines both the text as well as the uh, images. Um, recommendation uh, is another thing. Let's say the user asks or is looking for a particular, let's say, item. So they can describe what they're looking for and then you can go and search through a collection of images and find relevant items. Uh, that's another use case. Another use case could be for people who have maybe eye issues or let's say if they are blind, then because they cannot see, but what we can do instead is that they can take a picture of, let's say, something and this all this lava can describe the image and then maybe by combining, just let's say, the description. Maybe it would just be a pair of glasses, you know? It would be just exactly. a pair of glasses and then you can walk around and then there's a voice explaining to you like what you're seeing in front of you. Yes. So you need to combine it with voice technology, right? Right. So Lava will generate the text, describe, let's say, the image or the scene, and then you combine it with, for instance, text to, to speech, whisper or some other model, and then you can just, right, it can read the, the scene for you so you can hear it. Right. Yeah. Sounds good. That's it for today. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See you next time.